Welcome everyone um, to the Three Principles Global Community webinar. The Three Principles Global Community, or 3PGC, is a nonprofit organization that's committed to bringing an understanding of the three principles to people throughout the world. You can learn more about the Three Principles Global Community at 3PGC.org. We have um, Dick and Bettinger today with us, and I, I'm really excited. Uh, to hear what you have to say today, Dick, and especially coming off of a wonderfully relaxing vacation. Um, as you said, your, your mind is clear and your heart is open. So um, I, I'm going to say that there's the, um, the 3PGC conference coming up in October. It's October 27th through the 30th. And um, if you want to say a word about it, and then I'll, I'll, I'll give the formal intro afterwards. Well, I've been going to uh, Three Principles conferences since 1986. And there's something powerful about being with a group of people. They get quiet together. And, it, and it, uh, there's a contagion factor. And that in the depth of that quiet, it's almost impossible for people not to have insights. It's, it's just rich. It's just rich. I couldn't uh, recommend this conference more if people are able to get to it. Thank you for that. Yeah, I'm excited for it. So, um, just to introduce Dickin to anyone who might not know who Dickin is, Dickin Bettinger, um, EDD, received his doctorate in counseling psychology and is a licensed clinical psychologist, retired. In 1986, he met Sidney Banks and feels fortunate that for 23 years, he was able to learn directly from him. He's currently a three principles practitioner, educator, and trainer. He's worked with people in 24 different countries. Dickin co-founded the first 3P Center in the Northeastern US. Dickin was a senior staff at Pransky and Associate for 16 years, where he developed and led corporate and university leadership trainings team development, and executive coaching. In 2012, Dickin founded Three Principles Mentoring. He offers four-day immersion retreats for individuals and couples, 3P practitioner development, and individualized training programs. He enjoys leading group seminars throughout the U.S. and worldwide. Dickin is the co-author of a book on the Three Ps with Natasha Swerdloff called Coming Home. Dickin's been married to Cozy for 47 years, he has two adult children and two adored grandchildren. He enjoys photography, hiking, canoeing, and traveling. So with that, um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you, Dickon. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you very much, <clears throat> Bonnie. Thanks. Uh, and, and I really want to thank everybody for showing up today. It, it, I, I enjoy doing these so much. It's it's. To have to be able to spend some time, and I have some things, some ideas I wanted to share with you. But I, I'm really uh, looking forward to uh, taking time to hear from you. And uh, I love interacting with people and answering questions. So if you get questions, uh, be ready. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk to you. <laughs> uh, okay, well, uh, I, I don't know. I got really inspired to talk about this. You know, I think in part is that, uh, it, as you all know, the U.S. is embroiled in a political uh, battle right now. and. You see in political battles, you see both the best and the worst in people. And uh, uh, so you see, as people get insecure, you'll see the results of what ego does when it's let loose in a public arena. And judgment, criticism, fear, all that tend to polarize. And, and you, you watch the news and you see the 
horrors of war and injustice. And I know uh, a, a lot of people, and at times myself included, we get you, you watch the horrors that are going on in the world to hear about them, and you get all disheartened and discouraged, or you get annoyed or bothered or really upset. And, and so the question arises, well, what can I do to make a difference? How can I make a better world? What can I do that will help create a better world? Good question. And that's the one I want to uh, take a stab at today uh, uh, because it really gets at the heart of how change happens both individually and in couples and in families and in communities and ultimately in the world itself on a global level. Uh, let me first start off by saying I am extremely hopeful about the possibilities of people making a difference and creating a healthier world. I'm very, very hopeful about that. And it's from that hope. It used to be I, I'd watch the news and I would get really bummed out. Now I watch the news and I get inspired. I get inspired. I get uh, uh, inspired to continue to do the best I can to point people toward their wisdom, to wake people up to their wisdom, to help shake people out of being so wedded to their ideas and beliefs and concepts. Because when we get too wedded to our own ideas and beliefs and opinions, we lose connection with our wisdom. Let me read one. I just came across this this morning. Uh, it's from a book by Sidney Banks called The Missing Link. And if you haven't read it, uh, I've uh, I couldn't recommend it higher, and I've probably read it a hundred times or more. Uh, it's just a good, you won't find wisdom on the pages, but the words will point you towards your wisdom. <laughs> uh, like one time, uh, Sid said, uh, if you're listening to one of my tapes in the car, and you fall out of your personal thinking into a quiet space with a nice feeling. Take the tape out of the car, roll your window down, throw the tape out. <laughs> he says, because you found what you're looking for and you can't find that on the tape or in a book or from another person. You can only find that in the quiet of your own mind. And th that's really what I want to talk about is the connection between finding the quiet within your own mind and world change and any kind of change. Here's uh, one page from the missing link that has relevance to what I want to talk about. Cut off from innate wisdom. Okay, when we're so wrapped up in our personal thinking and our ideas and beliefs about anything, even about the principles, <laughs> just as dangerous. Cut off from innate wisdom. A lost thinker experiences isolation, fear, and confusion. Interesting, when you get lost in the woods of your own thinking, that happened to me once. I was with Koizu and we were hiking in the woods and we got so lost. We had no idea where to go, how to get out. 
we wandered, we passed the same orange mushroom three times. That was when we knew we were in trouble. <laughs> After walking for hours, I go, isn't that that same mushroom? <laughs> Cut off from innate wisdom, a lost thinker, a lost thinker, a thinker lost in their thinking. Experiences isolation, fear, and confusion. It's a guarantee. If you want to feel confusion, really think hard about something. And I guarantee you'll start to feel confused. This is why there are so many horrible atrocities throughout the world. Newspapers are full of wars, killings, children starving. Ignorance of our own inner wisdom is the cause of sin. There would be no sin without such ignorance. Well, that would be interesting. There would be no war, no conflict, no injustices. Well, let's bring this let's bring this down on a personal level. I started thinking when you're in a relationship, often you'll notice things that the other person is doing that you deem to be unkind, unloving, not understanding. And often you begin to have some thoughts about that. <laughs> You begin to feel dissatisfied with the way they are. And I think all of you probably have done what I did for a long time was feel my dissatisfaction strongly and wait until it got strong enough that I couldn't hold back anymore. And then go to the other person and express my dissatisfaction and criticism for how they're being and then telling them how I thought they should change so that things would be better. Have any of you tried that? <laughs> uh, uh, rarely have I ever seen the person on the receiving end of someone coming to add them from their dissatisfaction and upset. And when you dump that on the other person, Rarely have I seen the other person go, oh, thank you. Oh, that is so helpful. I am now inspired to change. That, that does it right there. <laughs> so uh, when I came across the principles, it was sort of shocking to me how much I was trying to get the outside world to change so that it would resolve my dissatisfaction. I wanted, I had a long list of things I was hoping for my wife. I was hoping she would start to meditate for as many hours a day as I was meditating so that she had a chance of becoming enlightened at some point. I, I was uh, hopeful that she could learn to listen to me at any moment of any day when I had dissatisfaction to express and she would be very understanding in the face of it. I was hoping that she would never have low moods again and would always bring me warmth and kindness. Good thing I met Sid Banks because he pulled the rug out from under the whole enterprise for me. And he's saying, if you want to find well-being, you first of all have to recognize that you don't have it and realize that it's just being created from within via thought. Now, to me, that was a shocker that all of my upset and dissatisfaction really didn't have to do with my wife's behavior. It was being created from how I was thinking about my wife's behavior. Do you know how hard that is for an ego to hear? It's so much easier to blame the other person for your dissatisfaction. It, it, it actually, given that understanding, it felt good. It actually felt good to be righteous about my dissatisfaction and the injustice that was being served me. 
Now, I don't, I don't want to paint my relationship with Kwesi as being really horrible. Actually, we had a really good relationship. It's just at those times when I got dissatisfied, it seemed to have a lot to do with her. And the solution seemed to be a lot to do with her changing. And Sid Banks comes along and he says, look within. Go within. If you go within, you'll begin to realize you live in a world of creation. And that everything you are experiencing is being created from within. And within just means beyond the physical. Within just means beyond your intellect. Within points people in the direction of their own spirit, soul, connection to the energy of life. He says, if you look within, if you have the courage to look within, in order to look within, you have to look beyond your senses go before your five senses. So go before your experiences, your feelings. Look before that. Look before. Then he says you have to go beyond the words, all the words in your head, all the ideas you have, all the beliefs you have, all the concepts you have. He was very emphatic about this. He says, if you want to find well-being, if you want to find inspiration, if you want to find wisdom, if you want to find solutions to problems, you have to go beyond your conceptual mind. You have to go beyond all concepts and beliefs and ideas. And that when we... When we go beyond that, we discover this space of just presence, openness, silence, spaciousness, this inner space, this emptiness, because it's before things, this no thingness, the great nothingness. Sid would say, that's what you're looking for. If you want to see yourself, if you want to see change happen, it has to start from within you. Because true change happens not when you try and get the world to change, but when you touch that space. And then he said, if you touch that space, even for a millisecond, if you can go beyond your precious little thought system and touch that space just for a millisecond, you'll know because it must. He was emphatic. It must begin to open up and manifest something beautiful in your experience in your life. In other words, if you touch that space, your feeling will stop contracting and begin to expand, which is pleasurable. It's a nice feeling. It's a beautiful feeling. So you begin to feel this opening, this expanding, this quiet presence. Uh, a client I was working with yesterday I said, how would you talk about that space? And she says, it feels just alive. It's the feeling of just being free of, free of the limitations, distortions, and contamination of our conceptual mind. It's free of all our personal judgmental thoughts and beliefs. It's free of all the shoulds we have about things shouldn't be the way they are. Things should be different than they are. It's beyond all of those thoughts that create an enormous degree of dissatisfaction. Right? 
it's very ordinary. It's just, sometimes they would say, it's just the now. The now is a moment of awareness, free of the contamination of your conceptual mind. It's, it's so ordinary. People can't believe that that's what they're looking for. <laughs> it's just this, right? You can be feeling horrible, and either you, you have a lot of thoughts and ideas about that or while you're in that, or you can feel horrible and have no concepts and ideas, and you're like a baby experiencing life directly perfect as it is, no, no thoughts that it should be better or different. As soon as you enter your conceptual mind, you enter into a duality that right away says, no matter what I'm experiencing, there's a better. And the better is off at some imagined future after something in the world changes. So it creates a sense of time. Later on, I'll feel better. Later on, I'll get over this feeling. When you fall out of your conceptual mind, there is no later on. <laughs> you can feel horrible and be fully present in a way that it's opening. It's opening. It's, it doesn't burden you. The, any thoughts are just flowing through the sky of your mind. They, they don't have meaning because you're not giving attention to them and pulling them down and believing them to be true. You can have any thought when you're in the now and it won't touch you and hurt you. That's a very deep spiritual teaching that our natural state of mind, you are untouched by any thought. You could have a, a thought, oh, I'd like to uh, punch this person in the face. And if you're in your conceptual mind, you'll think that's true. You'll give attention to it. You'll feel it strongly. You'll think it's justified by the other person. When you're in the now, deeply, what Sid called pure consciousness, pure free of the contamination of concepts and ideas, in the quiet stillness within your mind that's always there in every moment, whether you recognize it or not. That when you begin to sense and intuit that space, open, present, just this, now, life as it is, not being judged that it should be different. My experience should be different. Boom. You touch this space and your feeling begins to lighten and open. Then sadness can be a beautiful thing. Upset, opening without concept is a beautiful thing. There's no running toward an imagined better future. There's just this as it is, perfect, beautiful, present, alive. Right? And when we touch that space, it's characterized by these deeper feelings begin to emerge, deeper feelings of well-being, our innate well-being. And within that feeling is a knowing. So that when I fall into that space and I'm in that feeling, Without even thinking about it or trying, I just know what to do, what to say, how to respond to horrible situations, how to respond to people, right? And it's being guided by this wisdom. So Sid would say often, when you look out and see a deplorable world, let that be an inspiration to you to look within. Go beyond your senses, go beyond the words, go beyond your belief, cherished beliefs and concepts, even your spiritual ones. Go beyond all concepts. And there, 
you will meet this presence, this always loving, open. It's your refuge. It's your safety. It's your being. It's your salvation. It's your uh, uh, that uh, in in Sufism. Uh, uh, my favorite poet, Rumi, calls that space the friend. It's the friend you can always count on. It's the best friend. It's what every human being in the world is looking for, whether they know it or not. Because the paradox is that in that great nothingness, in that silence, in that space, there's a fullness of being. An aliveness. It's when we're at our best. It's when we're most comfortable in our own being exactly as we are. It's when you can be in a low mood and be totally comfortable in your own skin because you are not being informed by the thinking that's flowing through you. It's just flowing. It's coming and going. Thoughts are coming and going. Feelings are coming and going. The space, the presence, the now does not come and go. It's a fact. So Sid would say you have to go beyond belief to a fact to find what you're looking for. And that space is the ultimate answer. It's the ultimate answer to everything you're looking for. It's where you find peace of mind in the face of horrors in the world. It's where you find inspiration to respond with love and understanding to what's going on. It's the only place you will find. So the secret to understanding change on this level, and let's just for fun call it spiritual change as opposed to uh, the way we've always seen change is looking out at the world and changing the external variables first. If I can get them to change, then we'll have a better world. And Sid says we've got it backwards. It's been an innocent misunderstanding. That's not how change really happens. How change really happens is you go beyond your own experience and words into this quiet, into this space that's always there. You sense that, you feel that, you drop into that, you intuit that. It's not a technique. It's like when you fall asleep, you fall beyond that space into sleep. You try to use a technique to fall asleep, you can't do it. Falling into this space will never be reduced to a technique. It's just a recognition of truth. It's a recognition of what is. It's, it's sensing your own soul and relaxing into it, falling into it, like you do when you fall asleep. but it's this presence, aliveness, wide awakeness. There's no clinging to thought in the now. It's free to come and go. Your, your personal mind is free to do whatever it wants to do. Your thoughts can come and go. Your feelings can come and go. You're, you're allowing all experience to flow and allow this deeper intelligence to take care of it. You're choosing to allow wisdom to take care of what you've been trying to take care of so hard with your uh, ego, with your own self-efforts. So you wake up out of the illusion of the thinking that's creating your dissatisfaction upset you realize that that's just created from thought taken to be truth, personal thinking taken to be truth. Concepts and ideas believed in so strongly that it creates these emotions. Right? You wake up from that 
from the illusion of the truth of that thinking. Fall into this space of quiet. Get familiar with this space, this openness, this presence, the now, the most ordinary place in the world. I had one client who said, Dick, and this is impossible. I have no idea what you're talking about. And I say, okay, listen to me carefully and I'll tell you. Just listen to me carefully. She goes, okay, I'm listening. I said, well, that's it. I thought you said it was impossible. I thought you said it was so horrible. Listening has been used as a metaphor by spiritual teachers and by Sid Banks. It's, it's been used forever because listening is so ordinary that when, in order to listen, you have to just disengage from your thinking or you can't listen. You're not listening. You're just listening to your own thinking. You're not really present. People can tell when you're present and when you're listening to your own thinking. When you're listening, you're present. You've just fallen out of your conceptual mind for one little moment. One little moment. We just don't know that that's what we're looking for. So when people feel upset and distressed, my experience with clients is the last place they tend to look is in the ordinariness of the now, in the present moment actually beyond the present moment because if you go beyond your ideas about things you're going beyond your ideas about time so there is no better future there's just this and it's beautiful as it is it's like uh, it would be like the, our internal weather is perfect as it is in the same way that when it rains it's not a mistake and it, we, we got to get over this rain and get back to the sun what's wrong with this we got to stop this rain or fix this rain or do something about this rain. Uh, it, you fight nature with your ego, with your ideas, you're going to lose. You can't win that battle. You can't overcome nature with an idea. You can see the arrogance in that. So when you're raining, it's not, oh, God, I'm, I, I, I'm in this feeling, and I don't like it, and I got to get rid of it. And how do I do that? I got to clear my head. I got to feel better. And you're in your ideas in such a way that you've now put your well-being out into an imagined future. When you can only find it now, you can only find well-being right now. Right now, exactly as you are, in this moment, free of your concepts that says it's not perfect, it's not right, I shouldn't be here, I shouldn't be feeling this. Right now, here it is. And you touch that space, and it's the secret to global change. I am convinced, I am convinced, ultimately, by touching that space and accessing or bringing into the world more love and more clarity and more perspective, and more understanding and seeing the world from a higher level of consciousness is the foundation of true change. Because if consciousness is this universal field, thought is this universal field of energy, mind is this universal field of energy, this universal field of energy that's uh, creative, that's the power of thought, Aware, that's the power of consciousness. And wise, that's the power of mind. If, this, if we're connected to this infinite field, it's like an ecosystem. And as one part of the ecosystem gets healthier, the whole ecosystem becomes healthier. Okay. Doing whatever you are doing in, in your life, you can, be, you can help create a better world by metaphorically going within, raising your own level of consciousness, bringing more love and understanding into the world. You can do that walking down the sidewalk. You can be making the world a better place. You can uh, do that while you're uh, uh, chauffeuring your kids around to all their sports events. You can be creating a better world. Literally. 
creating a better world. Now that doesn't say that in moments of inspiration, you may be inspired to do something that looks like it's a, a, a big project of service. That's happened to me many times in my life. And it, and it, and it's, but when it's born of insight, when it's born of inspiration, it's not your behavior then that really changes the world. It's the shift in consciousness that allows you to enter into the arena of life with more love and understanding. And that's what you're bringing into the room. That's what you're bringing to other people who are suffering. And then effectively by how you're living your life, you're able to point people in the direction of the now, of being able to fall beyond the influence of their conceptual mind. You are pointing people toward their own wisdom. And wisdom then becomes the cure. So there's one problem. We get too wedded to our concepts and ideas and, and stay lost in the world of our conceptual mind. That's the universal human problem. And uh, uh, waking up to the nature of that and then touching this deeper space and then allowing wisdom to have her way with you and bring more guidance, love, understanding into your life. Opens the door for new possibilities in the world. I, I love the conference that in part was sponsored by 3PGC, the one, one Thought, One Solution Conference. Or as I like to think of it, One Problem, One Solution. One problem getting caught up in our ego, getting caught up in the world of personal thinking, thinking that what we think is truth, so we act on that thinking. One Solution, waking up out of the illusion of that, falling into this space which you just start to feel better and the quality of your thinking improves. Right? You learn to, in a sense, look within, beyond your thought world. Look within to this quiet presence that's so ordinary. It's so ordinary. If I followed any one of you around today, I could point out times when you were disengaging from your intellect, from your thought system, and I could say, there you go, there you go. And if you realize the power of that space, you would know that that's where the solutions lie when you feel like your life is stuck in, in, in problem or when you're feeling like the world is stuck in in problem or when you're, the, you, you can witness the injustices and horrors that actually are happening in the world, but that the response to that happens from a deeper level. How do you respond to that injustice? Do you respond purely from this impulsive, reactive place of personal thinking, or do you respond to that from a place of open-hearted love and kindness and compassion and understanding and wisdom? Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about. <laughs> that it's no different with you wanting to change your spouse or your friends uh, or your kids and, and, and as it is with wanting to change the world. And uh, when you begin to see the power that each person has to bring more love and understanding, literally, literally bring more love and understanding into the world, you get re-inspired to the ordinariness of this, the availability of this, the presence of this, the always present presence of this. 
So it's hopeful, it becomes very hopeful. Very, very hopeful. You let your dissatisfaction and upset invite you to look in a different direction. And then you'll be totally grateful for feeling stressed and upset and dissatisfied and because it invites you to go within, to raise your own level before trying to change the world. And then bring that into your relationships and to your kids, bring that, that what you discover, the beauty you discover within, you bring that into your relationships. And the spiritual teaching is the more you give that away, the more you get. Okie dokie. What do you think? How's it hitting you? Is this making any sense? Is this, what kind, of, what kind of questions does this raise for you? My favorite part of this now, I get to shut up and I get to <laughs> hear from you. <laughs> I, I'm just going to remind anyone who has a question, you can unmute yourself it, by clicking the little microphone in the lower left-hand corner of the screen. Ivana, yeah, hi. Hi, hi. lovely to see you. And oh my goodness, it was just amazing. Um, it feels like you've just spoken directly to me. <laughs> and me, for me. But I'm sure that's not the case because clearly that's very common across. <laughs> um, but what I really wanted to ask, I mean, I, I, gosh, I, I, I see such a big change in myself, you know, from mm. going, before, you know, even, you know, from before, before under, this understanding, of, you know, finding out about this understanding and, and even, you know, since I've been sort of learning and uh, uh, about it all and, you know, I, I just, um, I think I, at the beginning I kind of used to use the idea of the principles a lot to, to, to sort of manage my behavior. And I just wanted to ask you, and I think what I've see, seen over, over the last probably six months, a bit more, that, and I want, wondered what you, your thoughts are, is that there's, all, I feel like in me anyway, where I'm a very slow learner, <laughs> that there is like a healing process in changing my change I mean I'm very clear that that change is not out there you know in changing my husband or my children or, or people I've come across um, very much in me um, but yet found myself quite often still getting stuck in um, you know reactiveness and versus that that expansive space where you like okay I'm not going to react what else sort of thing um, and I just wonder whether you you know, if it's of any interest or be able to talk to the fact of where I used to be, you know, like, I don't know, I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one um, where I used to beat myself up, how I would be coming up yeah. um, in yeah. the moment and how well, how well am I doing? How <laughs> sort of thing. <laughs> Let's just take that. I mean, you say um, it's a slow process. It, it should be going faster than it is. I'd like to see it going faster than it is. You say you beat yourself up. You say that you get critical of yourself. What would, what would your experience be right now if none of those thoughts were true? Like right now, none of those thoughts are true. They're just made up. They're just ideas that you have. You weren't, you weren't born okay. thinking, I shouldn't be feeling what I'm feeling. This, this living process as a human being is a very slow process. Come on, baby, get your act together, <laughs> right? Right? Because you didn't have, you hadn't developed a conceptual mind that allowed you to be self-critical. Right. So, what would happen if, for a moment, those thoughts weren't true right now? Oh, well, I'll be just like my four and a half year old. <laughs> <laughs> and what would that be like? Well, happy most of the time, and then occasionally I'll be throwing myself on the floor and kicking all fours up in the air. Yeah, um, that—that's my life right there. 
<laughs> happy most of the time. And sometimes I throw myself <laughs> on the ground and kick and scream. <laughs> yes, <I do. laughs> but how nice not to have the editorial going all the time. Mm. Like, oh, what's wrong with you? You shouldn't be this way. I, almost always people are dissatisfied with their own progress because as soon as you start thinking about yourself, it's going to breed dissatisfaction. That's the nature of the conceptual mind. You can't find satisfaction in the world of ideas. And that's what I'm hearing um, in this webinar in more loud than I've been hearing it for the last six months or so, which is ah, just one, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. My pleasure. My pleasure. See, we all get tricked. We all get lost, which means suddenly the thoughts we have that create our dissatisfaction seem true. All right? Seems true. It's just a thought. It's just made up. You weren't born with any of that. You just, somebody else made up that you should be going faster. The paradox is when I stop thinking about going faster, Wisdom evolves me at perfectly. It has nothing to do with what I'm doing or not doing. It's like I get out of the way and wisdom just naturally evolves me. I used to work so hard on trying to evolve myself. Well, that's ego, trying to improve the weather. Rather than seeing more deeply the nature of the weather, and then you'll see there's, there's nothing to improve. You start to understand yourself rather than be hard on yourself. Okay, who else? Who else has a, has a question? I see some of you reaching for the mute button. Go, you can do it. <laughs> Go beyond those self-limiting thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Marina, great. Hi. How are you? Great to see you. Great to see you too. Yeah. So I want to talk about something that happened this morning. I had an appointment and suddenly it was canceled. And as I was driving back home, it got really, really, really quiet. Yeah. And it got so quiet that I just decided to park the car and just observe. Yeah. And I did that for maybe an hour and a half or so. Yeah. And as I was observing, I noticed all the doing that was going on. Mm -hmm. And how it felt so different from where I seemed to be that was just being. The space was so thick with being that it made me doubt whether it was possible to actually do from there. Yeah, yeah. And it got me wondering about how Sid, when he talks about thinking in a personal mind or thinking in a universal mind, about the possibility of acting in those both ways as well. Yeah. Oh, wow, what a great question. This is, I love it when people get to the point where they get just sucked into that silence because it's gotten more and more familiar. There's, there's a gravitational pull. Yeah. And what you're ex experiencing, Marina, is not uncommon that you, you begin to go beyond the ego. You begin to go beyond your belief system and all of a sudden your ego panics and goes, oh yeah, but you're just gonna stay here forever and you're just gonna withdraw from the world and you'll never do anything. And, and it's, 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 it's totally, that is, it's a moment of insecurity as you, as you go deeper into the unknown. 
But what right. came out of that was this idea of, I'm gonna to try to find the words. You're gonna? I'm gonna to try to find the words. So whatever is real is already given. even the ideas of what you need to do or don't need to do. And when you find them as already given, then you can just go and follow them and trust them. Yeah. If you have to figure them out and construct mm -hmm. them and do them. Then you probably are not coming from there. Did that seem like a new idea for you? No, not really. But I know, I mean, I know it makes sense. I just hope it, the words didn't get too much confusion. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I can tell you that I've never seen a person who goes into that deep quiet who at some point doesn't stand up and start doing something. And what comes out of that silence, what continues to unfold out of that silence and the feeling of, the, of just being is fresh and new and inspired. And you'll see evidence of that more and more as you get the eyes for it. You'll see that something beautiful comes out of that. I mean, even just in a practical way this morning, it used to be when I would prepare for a, a webinar, I'd do a lot of thinking about it. And more and more my preparation is to just get quiet. And then I was joking around with my wife. She came in and saw me sitting on the couch quietly. And she says, how's it going? And I said, I keep getting incredible ideas one after another. I, I, sometimes I just wish I could turn it off. <laughs> Enough already. <laughs> that, that um, resting in that quiet is not withdrawing from the world. It's going into the heart of the world. Because there you discover deeper feeling. And it's the deeper feeling that throws you back into the world with engagement. Honestly, if, you, if your mind empties and your heart fills, I guarantee you that feeling is full of wisdom and it will know exactly how to live you and move you and guide you toward a more engaged, loving, understanding life that has an impact on people around you. Right, because we are creators at heart. That's right. It's our nature. I remember this book called The Immortals, and it pointed to the idea of if men knew they were immortals, they would stop doing anything and they would just lay down and wait for nothing. And it always seemed so wrong, you know, it was like, no, because we are people. I know, I know. I know. It's impossible to just block it out. So, yeah. I, I, I know from experience that the more you touch this space and, and access the, this deeper, Silence is deeper well being. It will throw you into the world in a, in a way that surprises you. Because you, you get a sense of being free of all the thoughts that say, Well, I'm not good enough. I can't do this. I, sh I don't know if I should. I don't know if I can. If all of a sudden you're not being influenced by any of your self doubts, Anything becomes possible, literally. It doesn't mean you'll do all possibilities. It means you're now open to possibilities. 
and you begin to then move forward in, in the world uh, seemingly fearless. Thank you, Marina. We have time for another comment or question. Oh, Robin, good. Hi, Robin. Is, Rob, is Robin talking? <laughs> it's Krista. Hi. <laughs> oh, okay. I, 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 I saw Robin was holding her finger up. I thought she was about ready. Hi, Kristen. Oh, yeah, sorry. No, I, Robin, did I, did I jump No, go there? ahead. No, no, go okay. ahead. Hi, hi. I'm actually calling from Salt Spring Island. I thought people might be interested in that. Oh, that's nice. But you, I can't remember what exactly you said. And actually, it does touch on um something that probably everyone notices that when you try to put things into words it's almost like this fleeting thing <laughs> and it's 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 hard when you get into that feeling and then when you sort of i guess you're switching gears and trying to put it into words i find very challenging <laughs> um i think it's my question has to do with um because i still consider myself fairly new to the principles and um, do you find with, with people who, who are relatively new that it can act sort of as a, as a snowball effect? Like if you, if you um, to begin with, quite consciously try to put yourself into situations where it's easier to find that silence. And um, what I'm finding it is at the moment is I get a lot of glimpses of it yeah. and, and I feel I don't, you know, I don't have a lot of experiences where I'm really dropping in deep for, mm. you know, long periods of time. So can, can it sort of act as a snowball effect when, you know, if I just allow myself to get these glimpses, these glimpses, and then eventually they'll be longer and deeper and, more wisdom will be allowed to um, come forth. Yeah, each, each time you touch that space, Kristen, that, that's really what insight is, is when you touch that space, your, uh, the limitations and judgments of your conceptual mind sort of melt, mm -hmm. right? This happens naturally anyways to people. It falls away and you feel better and it seems to be linked into whatever circumstance you're in. So you go for a walk and I mean, Salt Spring Island is so beautiful. You go for a, a, a walk through the woods or down to the ocean and at a certain point, you're just feeling good and it seems like it's because you're on your walk or in your ocean when in actual fact, it's because your conceptual mind is relaxing and falling away and you're falling into this, the space of the now, right? So if that's helpful to you, fine. I would never say, you know, don't, don't go for walks in the woods, but at a certain point it's helpful then to just stay with that silence or that feeling and let go of the situation, <laughs> right? Just let go of, seeing it connected to the situation, mm. right? That's looking within. It's recognizing that is being within you. It's not coming from the trees or the ocean. It's not coming from the movie you're watching or the book you're reading. It appears that way. Hmm? This is why I remember I said in the beginning, Kristen, that my teacher, Sid Banks, said, if you're listening to one of my tapes and you fall into that space, you found what you're looking for. It was never on the tape. Don't think it was on the tape. Throw the tape away. So throw the situation away. Yeah. Right? Metaphorically, we're talking. You throw the situation away and you begin to discover the beauty that's within you. 
And you begin to then discover if it's really within me, that means that when I'm sitting in a meeting at work, if my personal thinking falls away, I'll fall into that feeling space that I was in by the ocean. Because it wasn't at the ocean, it was within me. And then you begin to sense that it's always there available. And that at any moment we can wake up out of our personal thinking into the now. And then fill up with mind's love and wisdom. Yeah, yeah. Because even before you said that, I, uh, I, I was, you know, the idea came to me that the, the most valuable um, thing to be able to do would be to, to recognize those experiences when I'm in like the most horrible mood or when like things around me are, you know, not as I want them to be. You know, when I can recognize those moments where I'm yeah. in that space. That's, mm. that's the magic. Uh, well, there you go. That's it. That's a great insight. Mm. It's fun. It's fun watching you. I just, you just, <laughs> I, I saw you. So <laughs> it's like in the cartoons where the light bulb goes off, you know? Yeah. It's, it's like, yeah. yeah. That's your wisdom right now, guiding you, helping you, giving you wise advice. Mm. Really? Yeah. Giving you wise advice. Now, don't think the wisdom is in those words or you'll be trying to hold on to that idea and you'll kill it, mm -hmm. right? So when you have an insight ever, let go of the words and stay with the feeling because the wisdom is in the feeling and I guarantee it will keep unfolding. You'll have more, more of that feeling and more of that thinking, fresh thinking, original thought will occur to you. That's yeah. great, Kristen. And, and that's, yeah, that's, 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 I, I always find it, yeah, very helpful to have conversations like this because, yeah. you know, so yeah. often if I'm just reading my books and watching videos and all the rest of it, it's so easy for me to get into that mind spin of, oh, well, it's happening for all these people and it's not happening for me or, well, you know, whatever yeah. the, our personal mind likes yeah. to think. Yeah. Like, yeah. And it, it's, it's great just to see how, how simple it is. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Good. Yeah, good. Seeing the simplicity, that's the key. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, uh, our hour is up. I can't believe it uh, flew by. Uh, again, I want to thank everybody for coming and... Uh, Keep the faith. <laughs> May you all continue to discover the beauty within you. Uh, uh, ho hope we uh, uh, our, our uh, paths cross again soon. Thanks, so much. Thanks, everybody. Bonnie, thank you for hosting. And just a reminder, the next webinar is September 27th with Judy Sedgman. Oh, good friend. Oh, she's got some stories. Yeah, Judy's great. Well, thank you, everyone, and we'll see you next time. Okay, love you guys. Yeah, beautiful. Bye-bye. Thanks. <laughs>